I'm a strong believer that the regulation and corporate uh, pressure is necessary to tackle that uh, the climate change uh, issue. I mean, we have one planet at the end of the day. So, and, and I think sense of urgency is necessary. So regulation is mandatory, and we can see that historically by uh, imposing regulation, we, we are pushing the industry to, to, to transform and to change. But it has to be also uh, support. It's, it's not a one-way story. I mean, if we apply, uh, regulation has to be at the European level, but also a lot of trading and alliances has to, to, to happen to allow uh, keeping the competitiveness of Europe should not be a burden. And uh, by putting regulation, we have to have an understanding of the, the key value chain and when Europe is standing in that value chain to allow also the players to survive huh, and to stay competitive and not kill the jewels that uh, we have in Europe. So, yeah, it's, it's a balance. It's really a difficult balance to have. I'm a strong supporter of regulations because no pressure, no change. Uh, and we have to trust also the corporates. I mean, trust the corporate pressure. I'm sure uh, mentality mindsets are changing, of course, uh, and they can be faster. So we will need to have a, a better understanding, transparency, and also um, more awareness what value, semiconductor value chain in Europe is to mm -hmm. fine-tune <laughs> regulations without hurting the competitiveness of the players in Europe. Huh? Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, what is key linked to that is that uh, applying a regulation, I think, is just essential. You cannot make happen happening this environmental concern without regulation. But clearly in Europe, because of this fragmentation of the industry, you, not, you need to support that also by helping the players to find their way in terms of reducing their, their, their footprint, in terms of environmental footprint. And this collaboration I think is something that's quite unique because Europe is already structured very well in terms of collaboration among the different countries, among the different levels of the supply chain. And combining regulation and this, how to help these companies to make it happen, I think it's something that can really leverage the effort in Europe and make it beneficial for the economy. Yeah, well, uh, and, and let's have a con concrete example of that. You know, my, my company, Standard H Week, we decided, you know, so some years ago, so for sure to uh, uh, compute our scope two, scope three, and so on. And and when you are inside the value chain, you know the scope two of someone is the scope three of the other. So uh, we took the top 1,000 suppliers, you know, on all the fields. So some of them are inside the semiconductor industry, and we decided to help them as well because we want and we have a, uh, an environmental commitment to reduce the overall power consumption of the company and the environmental footprint as well. So we help them because we are part of the solution: energy efficiency is our business as well. So meaning that we are helping our suppliers in order to reduce the environmental foot footprint, to compute it first, because you need to baseline it, you know, to understand where you are currently having this energy and the waste as well, in order to be more efficient. And, and that's also, so I don't know if we call it corporate pressure, but that's the way I would say a, a company could behave, you know, and we are a big or a small company, I don't know. But Let's say that's also a way to put some pressure uh, directly on the supplier, but also to be part of the solution, 